Hello everybody, Luke Schulte, Field Agronomist from X Hybrids. If you had the opportunity to plant soybeans rather early, you're starting to see those soybeans emerge and you're starting to do some final stand evaluations. You know, it takes about 125 to 135 heat units or GDUs in order for soybeans to emerge. Now this year may be a little different when we think about that differential between planting population and final stand. And the reason that comes down to that differential may be a little greater is it's really about the harvest conditions last late summer and fall. Many of those seed production areas were very, very dry and went six, seven weeks without any rain in August and September of last year. And because of that, we had more bushels or more acres than we, than we cared for of seed beans that were harvested at less than ideal moisture. And as you know, when soybeans get dry, it's hard to keep the splits down. It's hard to keep that seed coat on. And while the germ is still good, it's hard to maintain that seed integrity from harvest through processing and clear through the planter into the ground. And because of that, I expect it's likely we're going to see a little bit bigger differential between planting population and final stand this particular year. But what is an acceptable population? We looked back at a, a study that we did here at PFR for the last four years. It was a replant threshold study in 15 inch rows. And as you can see in front of you, as long as we had a, a fairly consistent 60,000 or greater stand, it led to a higher net return than starting over or replanting and having a much better stand, but planting much later. And I think there's a couple things that we got to keep in mind though, from PFR to the field. I'm not necessarily comfortable at 60,000 in the field. That was done at PFR where we have minimal weed pressure and consistent soil types. I'd prefer that 60,000. My minimum is somewhere in that 75,000 if they're even, somewhat evenly spaced because I want the benefit of additional shade. Shade to conserve moisture in those tougher clays and those thinner gravelier soils. And shade for weed control. Most of our farm field situations have higher weed pressure than we do within PFR. And the best herbicide out there on the market today doesn't come from a jug it's actually shade. But I also think it's important as we're evaluating these stands and if we have maybe less than ideal stands to understand where the yield is coming from. Our largest contribution to the yield is coming from the plants that made it initially, early planted. And if you look at this data that you see in front of you, it's Purdue data that was concluded in the early 2000s that kind of proves this point and illustrates this point. So the way they conducted the study, as you can see the two treatments on the left is the initial planting with a drill, so seven and a half inch rows. Pretty big population differences, 200,000 and then 66,000. And then those three treatments to the right of there is actually looking at what does it look like when we try to beef up those populations with a 30 inch row planter. As you can see, there was three different populations, 40, 80, and 120,000. But what I wanna draw your attention to is the shades of green and where the yield is actually coming from. The dark green is the yield contribution from the earliest planted soybean. And as you can see, the light green is that secondary yield or that yield that came from the 30 inch row of soybeans. As you can see, even when we tried to increase plant population or Purdue tried to increase plant population, they didn't necessarily increase that net yield over that initial stand that was at 66,000. So a couple things to glean, I think from this data. Number one is even a 30 inch row planter, fewer row units, but even a 30 inch row planter is gonna do a good bit of damage to the initial soybean stand. And those initial soybeans, obviously are the large contributor to yield. Secondly, even though our stands may be reduced or that final stand isn't necessarily what we desire, oftentimes we're still better off to leave it alone if it's consistent, because it's probably gonna net us as much, if not more than a late planted, nearly perfect stand. And then lastly, we have to think about one of the fundamental components as to why early planted soybeans are oftentimes our highest yielding is, it's about nodes per acre. It's been proven through research that when we plant early, we get more nodes per plant. And that same research has found that for every additional node per plant, we get an additional three to five bushel per acre. That's what we don't want to compromise as we think about thickening up a stand is that initial, those initial soybean plants give us the highest yield potential. So just some things to consider as you start to evaluate stands, you may see some bigger declines versus planting population than maybe years past. But how do we make the best of that situation? How do we make the right decision and take the emotion out of it? As always, if you have any questions around this topic or how to evaluate your own stand, give us a call. Thanks for tuning in.